Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for coming back. We just got finished up with a, another awesome master chat, as it always is on Thursdays. And I am here with our guest moderator. We figured out the audio issue, and we got her on. JC, thank you so much for leading the chat tonight. It was awesome. Like, I was excited about the topic because just where we're at in the year and everything, and it didn't disappoint. I thought it was a phenomenal chat. So, what are you? How are you feeling right now? What's going through your head right now after the chat? I feel like it was fast and furious. <laughs> it is. So many great people. I loved it. And yes. I think, you know, this time of year, lifting up others and celebrating the work of our colleagues and our students is so important. And so many people yeah. have great, great ideas to share. So yes. I can't wait to go back and look through. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's one of the fun things just because you can just scroll back through and check it out. And I also love we have you'll see uh, if you haven't seen before with it, but like being a moderator, you got to tag a lot more on this one. We have people a lot of times where people are still answering the questions on Saturday and on Sunday, and it like keeps going. So it's really cool when it's a, a good chat like that because it's most likely going to happen. So um, I, I did a bunch of screenshots, so we can go through a bunch of stuff. But I wanted first was there I, what I would have asked you at this the at the pre chat video had I figured out the audio issue then is sort of when you're coming up with the idea of this topic and putting together the questions, was there anything specific in your head that you were sort of hoping that either you were going to get out of the chat or you were going to see in the chat or that you wanted participants to really take away from the chat? Well, I think there is a tendency at this time of year to feel, you know, loss of energy and worn down. Right. And, yeah. you know, I, I hate that countdown. Like, Oh, we have 12 days left. Well, you know what, then let's make them 12 awesome days instead of, yeah. you know, so I loved seeing all of the people in the chat with such a positive twist on everything and coming up with all these creative, positive ways that they were going to keep that going. So I, I appreciated that. I love when, when teachers are thinking about how to end the year strong and just giving their best to those kids in those final days. So I, I love the positivity. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, so much positivity. I mean, it was, this, this was a good good topic for right now. Yeah. So question one was, with the end of the year in sight, how do you stay positive when others are focused on the countdown, which is what you were just talking about? What strategies can you share? So I want to let me let me grab a couple here. So Jerry Topes, 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 I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, um, says, keep your focus on the kids. The memories you create now will carry on with them into the summer, uh, and this will create hashtag joy which I thought was a great, just again, like you said, focus on the positive, focus on the kids and what they need versus the countdown to the end of the year. I think is a cool one. Uh, Tika, who's always in with us, she said, I'm a firm believer in make every day count. Uh, they are writing thank you letters to their specialists, analyzing songs about perseverance, reading uh, a great book and making their own board games. I love it. It's good stuff. I love that she's infusing creativity in that. Yeah. You know, real passionate about maker education. So the idea yeah, she's having kids make their own board games. Awesome. I love that. And and, and I love the focus on, I love that. So they're, they're showing gratitude with the letters, right? And they're analyzing. So they're still thinking they're, you know, they're, they're, but she's infusing both the writing, they, they got songs, they're reading a book and then the board games. I think too often, if we start that countdown, we're more likely to just, you know, put on a video, a movie or oh. throw down some maybe word searches or something like that, where this is, I love that Tika's got them, like you said, using that creativity and keeping that, that let learning going all year. So that's great. Uh, Jared Weiss said, I love the briefing with his students, talk about the year, their ups and downs, what worked and what could be improved on in her, in his classroom. Uh, he said, I get so much positive energy from talking with the students. Um, and then Eric Guys says, a puzzle a day keeps the negativity away. <laughs> Content-based puzzles as challenges to start the class off on the right foot. I mean, who doesn't love puzzles, he says. So, yeah. so again, that, that creativity, right, and, and leave them in there. So were there any of the answers to this one? I got a bunch more, but that you saw that really just, like, jumped out and you're like, yes. Well, I think, was it Tika's response? And somebody else responded similarly to one of the other questions about the idea of a handwritten note. But yeah, uh, such a lost art. And I love the fact that she's taking time to get kids reflecting and, and finding that gratitude, that person that they want to thank and writing that out. I love that. Yeah, I saw there were there were quite a few, I think, on both this question and then the question about our colleagues later on. A lot of the handwritten notes, one mentioned for that one, but several on question one. And then um, 
a lot of that reflecting, which I thought was great, uh, just because I think that's so important. I think Tiffany Ott actually said that she they pull out all their uh, their past like pre unit assessments or pre assessments and stuff, so she can show them in their own handwriting where they were and where they are now, and that really that reflection piece. So really enjoyed seeing all the reflection there. So uh, I like that. as a classroom teacher, I taught first grade way back in the day, nice. and. When kids come into first grade, I mean, they're really struggling to string a sentence together. And you hold that like first writing assignment and you kind of tuck it away. And then you yeah. show them what they did at the end of the year and put those side by side. So much power in that reflection, even even for the youngest learners. I, I really hope my my son is in first grade this year. Thank you. And oh, really? Yeah. I, I really I hope that his teacher does that because we've like we've seen the growth, but I bet we don't even realize what it's been. Yeah. I think first grade is probably the biggest area of growth <laughs> in, in yeah. like reading and writing for sure. Uh, yeah, I think so as well. I want to say hi, Ray. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Allison. Hi. <clears throat> so I'm going to give another shout out. So I was down at, I got to go to, I was down in Atlanta earlier this week, the first couple of days this week. And Jeff Kaplan is just outside of Atlanta. And Jeff's been involved with Mastery Chat for, I don't even know how long. Um, and was trying to implement new things in his classroom, specifically the grid method, which, you know, was created by Chad Ostrowski and got a lot of pushback and has fought really hard to do it and implement it full blown this year, all year with flexible seat in the whole nine. Right. Uh, I, I got to, I drove up, stole my brother's Jeep because my brother, we were down visiting my brother and drove up and saw Jeff and spent some time in his classroom and holy cow, is he rocking it? So I just wanted to give him another shout out. I gave him one earlier, but uh, I walked in and it was like buzzing noise because all the kids were working. And I think only one kid noticed that I, that some stranger walked in <laughs> because they were just engaged. And they were nine days away from the end of the year. Yep. And they weren't engaged like watching a movie or playing games. They were engaged working on the projects, which I thought was just awesome. So big shout out to, to Jeff again on that one. So right. question, question two was what classroom-based or school-wide experiences do you design to keep learners engaged and end the year strong? So do you? I'm going to go to you as a district admin. Do you guys, do you have anything that you do district wide or specific to schools or do you well, just send Kristen Nan everywhere to make everything okay? <laughs> That's what I would do. You know, just, what? <laughs> I, I call on her often to <laughs> sprinkle her magic for sure. <laughs> um, well, I'll give you an example. Uh, so I'm in district office. Our building is connected to our junior high building, which serves okay. in grades five through eight. So I'm always walking over there, you know, when I want to get a kid fixed. <laughs> um, and today I walked into a classroom, uh, Heather Shaddish, one of our fifth grade ELA teachers, she was reading a children's book to her kids called Building with Books. Okay. And her kids literally took books off of the shelf and started building structures with them. Like one nice. group built a castle, one group built this tower that was like seven feet tall. Like you want to talk about a buzz in the room. Like they were loving the hands-on piece and were just connecting with one another so well. It, it, yeah, I mean, total engagement and smiles on their faces with what, you know, seven days of school left. Yeah, that's awesome. That's got to make you feel good. Love it. In there. Yeah. So do you do anything district-wide or do you kind of let the teachers No, I mean, they, they have do. the trust and, and they do it, they do it, they rock it out, so. Yeah, I mean, we, we trust them to make those decisions. They know their kids better than we do. Um, our yep. district did tonight, just before I jumped on with you, um, had our annual STEAM walk. Um, okay. So we bring in um, families and community members, and we do all kinds of hands-on things around science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And um, they were making slime and doing all kinds of things with circles. <laughs> so they had a blast. It's just a, a nice way to kind of celebrate some learning at the end of the year. That's awesome. So Katie said question two was her favorite, so many great ideas. So let's talk about some of the ones that we saw here. You just touched on a couple of really good ones. Uh, Tyler Arnold uh, said projects at the end of the year that either push students further or reinforce areas of weakness that that also mirrors standards. So they're sticking with that projects. Uh, Jennifer Huskins said, uh, we just finished The Giver. She said literally today. Uh, we're going to watch the movie and then compare and contrast. Um, all my students, which she's in all boys, are very excited. Uh, we've also had comp competitions with gem kits, so still keeping that creativity going, um, which I love. Uh, Teresa Engler, is a, she's a technology coach, and she says she's encouraging teachers to find ways to keep students involved and engaged. Coding activities, online lessons, uh, using Edpuzzle, online games like Quizlet or quizzes, uh, rotation stations, 
uh, vocabulary games, review. She's just listening to all kinds of stuff. That's a great one to go back and, and check out the tweet. Uh, but I love it, just constant things. Uh, Katie, I, I actually, of course, screenshot one of Katie. She says, I like to start putting together ideas the kids have voiced to me throughout the school year. Uh, right now we are running with a, a who would win unit based off the book series since they loved our NGSS animal units, uh, slide deck writing organizers, and graphic design. And she's got a picture. She's working on something there. So there you go, Katie. She must have really liked that one. Um, well, and you mentioned um, my buddy Kristen. So I was in her class this afternoon. Um, yeah. So there's a chart paper up on her the front of her classroom. And there were okay. all kinds of apps and websites listed up there. And I said to one of the kids, well, what are you guys doing? And they said, oh, we're all going to pick one, and we're going to do an app smackdown in our class next week. And I was like, that's awesome. So every kid is kind of picking out a tool that they've liked throughout the school year, and then okay. they teach their peers about them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, she's so awesome. It's it, like her awesomeness actually hurts sometimes. <laughs> like we feel it over here in Ohio. happy <laughs> to hear that. Uh, Emily Nelson says she does a big, a big in all capitals letters, big digital breakout to review everything scattered. Uh, she said scattered in the questions are questions like, what are you excited most for during break and things of that nature? Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I think Chad Ostrowski mentioned it. And then Matthew, this, uh, Matthew Borelli also mentioned uh, June becomes the risk taken month. Uh, mm -hmm. he's a, he's an admin. He says they encourage teachers to try new techniques and play around with the curriculum. So I love that. So, uh, any qu any answers that jumped out at you for question two or? No, but I like what you just said. I mean, I think, you know, for us, state testing is over. Everyone kind of breathes a sigh of relief. And now is the time. I mean, if you want to try some wild idea, go for it. I mean, this is the time of year where you should take that creative risk as an educator and turn that control over to the kids. Um, I, I sometimes feel like you find the, the best learning at this time of year when you kind of let go a little bit. I have a feeling that you encourage your teachers to do that all year long, though. I do. I okay. do. But. <laughs> I've heard things. Uh, yeah. So, which which is great. But yeah, I mean, this is I, like you said, you're, you're over that that testing hump and the the stress and stuff, and now's the time to just to to go at it and, yeah. and figure stuff out. So very cool. Uh, so, question three was how do you celebrate the accomplishments of your students after a year of amazing growth? Any cool examples that you saw that we asked them to show examples? I don't know if I captured as many during this one but anything that jumped out at you or any ways that you've seen in your schools that are really awesome in the way that you're celebrating students and the growth um boy i'm trying to think um you know i think sometimes when um it, it i don't think it has to be a big formal walk across the stage kind of celebration and i mm -hmm. think sometimes teachers get caught up in that it can be in those really small ways like we said with a note or with with some yeah. kind of quiet recognition um i mean giving a little one a, a post-it note that says like your writing just has grown so much this year i think it's yeah. that's huge um i was hoping to see um a lot of pictures of of good ideas I, it was so fast for me i don't know that I yeah that i i I felt like three just flew by. I don't know why. Like, I think I only got three, which, like, the other ones have had, like, six. Uh, but Becky uh, Schnexer? 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 I'm sorry, Becky. I just butchered that. Uh, she says, I have them revisit work from, from the year so they recognize their growth. Uh, their examinations are a celebration, uh, and she loves hearing their reaction, which it was similar to like, what I said that Tiff does, too, Tiffany, with, which is letting them really see the growth in themselves versus – just telling them, but you're actually showing them. I saw a lot of that of sharing data with them, like the the numbers and, and how they grow and, and making charts for them and stuff like that. Uh, uh, Alicia Ray says we have academic and athletic celebrations on the last day. We honor eighth graders during the celebration. Um, they take them on special trips. Uh, in her, she said her daughter's school is taking them on special trips uh, tomorrow. So they're going to a picnic in the park. So just little things like that. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, Don Bailey also is similar to like what Tiff says. She says she, she has them look back at what they wrote about math in September and then discuss how their attitudes are different now, which I think is really cool to Ooh, see. Yeah. We'll be really interested to be in that room, a fly on the wall and listen to like what they wrote in September about math and how maybe if they've grown to like it or not like it or what they've grown through. So I love the reflection piece with the students. I think that's, that's crucial. Absolutely. Uh, so question from four and this was the one I, I really like this was 
What do you do to lift up and celebrate your colleagues during this time? And what small things can we do to take care of one another? This was a big one, I think, was which is such an important piece because of the stress of state testing and coming to the end of the year and just the kids getting crazy and stuff. I think banding together with your colleagues, make sure everyone's all right and everyone's doing what they need to do uh, and that you're picking them up when they need picked up and, you know, giving them that permission to take a, a brain break and all that type of stuff is really, really important, I think. So do you guys do you do anything in your district when it gets on this? Like, do you, do you see specific things going on amongst the colleagues and, and, and your teachers? Well, I'll give a shout out to our high school staff because last week we had uh, a professional development day and they spent their afternoon together playing cornhole. Nice. Um, but just like let down your guard and, you know, let's do something fun that's going to connect people together and bond. And you know what, I, you know, were they, were they using their professional development time to develop? Yeah. Uh, that's oh. a PLC yeah. development, right? I mean. Social emotional relationship development goes a long way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think sometimes having some fun is a great way to connect with your colleagues and let them know you care. And any, any time, uh, any kind of team building exercise really is professional development. It's just as a whole versus individual pieces. Uh, because if you're not, if that team's not functioning the way it needs to be, if there's, if there's issues, if there's infight, if there's drama, that's going to affect everything and therefore affect the kids. So I do, I think that's a great professional development, actually. That, <laughs> that works out really well. So uh, we saw a lot of this. So Don actually said it leaves a little notes to have encouragement, uh, especially on testing days. Uh, sometimes we forget that it's just as stressful for teachers as it is for students. Uh, Trish uh, Goosen said homemade goodies, uh, their favorite hot or cold beverages, notes, the gift of just time. So I assume she's talking about just giving them an ear to talk to or – just stopping by to say hi, things of that nature. Uh, Tracy uh, Sangster said, uh, lots of love and uh, bitmojis, and she's got one that just says, I appreciate you. So just I think some, uh, something as simple as that is just letting your colleagues know, like, hey, I appreciate you. You know, thanks for what you do, and I'm here for you. Uh, Robert Breyer down in North Carolina says, we, we have a shout-out board where teachers can celebrate each other for the great things they're doing around the school. Um they, they try to be strategic with support and breaks and then lending a helping hand when, when needed and stuff. So that's, I love it. That's good stuff. Um, five, I th I'm pretty sure I only took one shot for five. If I, Cause this was so question five was all about as we get to the year end of the year and we're looking towards summer, what will you do to take care of yourself and re-energize? Mm -hmm. And I saw a ton. I just, I don't, I don't, I was getting into them like a lot of, I'm going to take, spend some time with my family, go fishing. I'm disconnecting for, you know, a month and a half. I'm reading books. I'm doing a lot of stuff. One that I, I saw. I don't remember who it was. Somebody was doing paddleboard yoga. Yeah. I'm sure that I saw that remember. too. I don't, who was that? I don't know. I said that was. I have to look back. Yeah. I can't remember who it was. I, I only screenshot of one. It was Jennifer Huskins because she's defending her dissertation. I on June 30th. On I know. I saw you yeah. comment on that. She said, then I might drive to the beach and sit in the, the surf for a couple of days. I'm home with only pleasure reading. But uh, so just wanted to sort of give Jennifer a shout out. You're awesome. You got this. She's probably not. She's probably not watching because she's like, you know, working, studying, <laughs> studying and stuff. So um, but I thought that was awesome that, that she's got that going. So that's she's got a little over a month. So um, what are you doing this summer? Like, what do you do? What's your thing to do? To, to relax and take care of yourself after the year? I'm definitely a reader. So I'm, you know, getting my book stack ready of things I want to read this summer, professional and, you know, fun stuff too. Mm -hmm. I commented on someone's um, tweet that the beach is definitely my happy place. So my family and I will go to the beach for a week. And where, where, what beach you go? Where do you guys go? We go to Bethany beach in Delaware. Okay. Yeah. Um, we already have, we, we're in Disney over Easter, so we had mm. that crazy not yeah. vacation. I was going to say, is that a vacation? <laughs> no. You have to do it, but it's not a vacation. You yeah. need a vacation after the vacation. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I definitely like to chill out by the pool and, and do some reading and try to, you know, do whatever I can to, to refresh myself over the summertime. It is a little bit slower here in central office with the kids and the teachers gone, but we still have uh, a lot of planning and preparation to do. Plenty to do. Yeah. Um, any, any, do you have like a, a book that you're particularly really excited about? 
well, someone tweeted out about my friend Rochelle um, quotes for EDU. Yes. Yeah, yeah. um, so I definitely need to grab a copy of that and get some inspiration from the quotes that uh, all of her colleagues shared. Awesome. I love it. So I took a bunch of snapshots of, of books that people read. So I'm going to just start rattling them off. Yeah. So Allison Christ so said, uh, uh, the, the lead like a pirate books, uh, principal Caffelli. I, I don't think I'm saying his name, his new book. And then Brene Brown's there to lead, which is one that gets mentioned on teach better talk podcast all the time. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, I, I, this one says, I hope you'll, you'll check out my new release with ISTE now available for pre-order, which is connect to lead. Yeah. So when is that coming out? Uh, June 17th, I think is the official launch date. Yeah. Um, I just got copies yesterday. Did you? Yeah. It was very exciting. Nice. Power of your learning. You know? Uh, yeah, that's great. So can you give us the 30 second overview? Uh, it is what all about, expect? um, the importance of being a connected educator. Um, and I know a lot of people have talked about that, but this one is tied to all of the new uh, ISTE standards for leaders. Okay. And so just talking about how you can build a network. Um, I've been involved in a network in our county that we literally built from the ground up. So a face-to-face -face, uh, network of educators and leaders that work together and um, plan professional development and, and move teachers forward in this challenging time in education. Um, and so the book kind of talks about that. It shares tons of stories from all the people in my PLN who um, talk a little bit about, you know, why it's important to them to be connected and how it's impacted mm -hmm. teachers and kids and families. And um, so, yeah, ISTE, uh, ISTE will put that out next month. Love it. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and self-pat here because Jeff Kaplan gave us a shout out saying that the word is out that our book is coming out. So looking at probably end of August. We'll see. Can't hopefully, wait. hopefully it'll be a good one to be on some shelves. Uh, Alicia Ray, anything that drops from, from Dave Burgess, which that's who we're with. So I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to, she's the one who said, uh, looking forward to quotes for EDU. Uh, she said, hashtag champ, champ for kids, hashtag future driven. And she's got a few Seth Godin books uh, and Daniel Pink books, which are both uh, anything they write are awesome. Uh, Brian Claff said the formative loop. Uh, it's all about a formative assessment in the science classroom. Katie Alvarez said, because uh, so she's headed into a new uh, position next year as a coach. Uh, so she said her reading list is long. Impact Cycle by Jim Knight is at the top of the list, though. Uh, let's see. Corey says, I need to focus on reading more of, a, of and finishing A Passion for Kindness by Tamara Letter, which is a great book. Yeah. Uh, and then Trish gave it a shot. It took a picture of the a bunch of books. One is Embarrassment. I can't see what's by Time for Change by Muhammad Cruz. Leading with Intention. Uh, Give and Take. Grit by Angela Duckworth. She's got a bunch of them there. I took a lot of pictures of these. <laughs> I'm just gonna go through. Uh, all right. Innovators Mindset was mentioned. Kids deserve it. Uh, Jeremy Wrinkle said he he always revisits. Uh, Ron Clark's 55 Essentials Every Year. Uh, Learner-Centered Innovation by Katie Martin. Martin is coming. I think that's coming. Or she said it arrive in Saturday. That's what it was. Okay. Uh, anything by, let's see. I didn't read what that is. Dare to Lead mentioned again. And Game Changer. There's a lot. Boy, I took a lot of pictures here. Uh, Through the Lens of Serendipity by Allison Apsey, which was yeah. a great one as well. Uh, oh, she mentioned ours. So thanks, Cheryl, for that. Uh, Courtney Paul, who just said, how can I share my Amazon cart with you? Cause it's crazy. <laughs> uh, so Courtney, I'm going to give Courtney a shout out. She's, she's at work right now. So she joins us on her way cause she is in and I'm horrible cause I can't remember where she's at, but she's across the world. So she's like, it's tomorrow. It's Friday morning there. Oh. She chimes in every, th every, well, it's Friday for her Thursday for us and joins us. So we always awesome. give her a shout out. Uh, Jennifer logs in, just put a whole bunch of pictures. She's got teach like a pirate on there dive into inquiry there's a lot of awesome books out there that's like the problem <laughs> there's so many good education so books. Much to read i know oh, wow. yeah so uh, if you're i don't know if you're like me do you do you just grab a book and you read it cover to cover or are you like me and have 13 books that you're reading at once no i usually can only do like two or three at once okay because i'm like i'm like they're like i it's weird like i don't I do a lot of they're like referencing so like i have them and i read pieces and parts and then i just reference back based on like 
the topic and what I need sort of inspiration on or what I need to dive into. It's weird. So I always have like my bookshelf back there and I have like bookmarks in like 30 different books. And when I have something, I'm like, ah, oh, I need to catch up on that. I just go and I grab it. I might keep it for a couple of days and I'll work through it. And I'm weird like that. Whatever works for you. I don't even know how many books I've actually, actually ever finished in my life. It's probably <laughs> not a very big number. So, um, <laughs> so the last question was, what are some of the professional learning opportunities? Do you have any that you're going to this this year? Any exciting conferences or developments or events that you got going on that you're excited about? I'm excited to go to ISTE. It'll be to my first time. Yeah, Christine yeah. and I will go to ISTE and we'll be presenting there. Nice. Um, super excited about that. I don't Great. know. Maybe this fall I'll present at the Teach Better conference. I don't know yet. Maybe. Maybe we're getting together as a team this weekend to try and figure that all out. Okay. Maybe. All right. right. So we got way more than we thought we were going to get, which is great. A great problem to have. We got a lot more submissions than we thought we were going to get the first I'm year, sorry. which is great, which is great. And, and, and I mean, I pretty much all of them were really, really good too. So it's been really hard. Uh, so we've been kind of working through them all individually. And we're coming together this week. We got Ray's flying in tomorrow and we're spending the weekend as a team. And the goal is to make final decisions. And we've asked some other people to provide input and then hopefully going to lay out the the schedule and start rolling that out over the next two weeks so you should know soon well so we will be there no matter what i hope yeah i hope you'll be here no matter what yes. but uh i do know that your session was very good so i think it would be a skill is that the same is that what you're doing at isti what you submitted uh or is it something I have, different? well i have a couple i'm doing at isti yeah i probably probably similar yeah maybe <laughs> Trying to see if there's any other. Yeah, so th there was a lot of ISD talk, a lot of uh, random, uh, a lot of different um, uh, conferences. There's a lot of conferences. I encourage, whether you come to our conference or not, that doesn't matter, but go to at least one, if not multiple, this summer. Uh, and if for no other reason, just to expand your your network and connect with people. I, that's such a, I mean, you're going to, when you go to a conference, these are all people who are putting time, money, energy, into learning when they're when they don't have to which means you got the best of the best there that's so right. those are people you want to go connect with they're going to help you they're going to challenge you to grow they're going to be a great resource for you they're going to be looking to to connect themselves so uh especially if you're you know if you're a younger teacher maybe a teacher who's just struggling with some stuff maybe you're an older teacher looking for that spark again go to a conference and get connected uh if you come to teach better conference that's awesome but like isti is phenomenal um and there's a bunch of I like these little, con there's a bunch of little conferences all over the place that don't have the big names that are just phenomenal. We're going to Summer Spark in Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, and it was last year was just incredible and it was going to be great. We're all, we're all going out. We're like taking over this year. We're going to go well, take over. Even the ed camps. I mean, it doesn't have to yeah, be. Yeah. And ed camps. Yeah. Anything like that. We yes. hosted an ed camp last year. It was awesome. It, great, great learning. Um, yes. And I will do some traveling this summer too. I, I offer PD kind of on the side. So I go and do workshops with educators. Nice. And, um, you know, travel all over the place. And it is so great to see, like you said, you know, in the summer, they're there, they're choosing to be there to learn. Yeah. Um, and I, there's nothing better. I, yeah. I can't, the last, the last several years. And again, this year, like the very first days out of school, quote unquote, we're running workshops in yep. schools. And it's like, these are teachers who literally just like finished up and they come right back to, to keep learning and getting ready for next year. And that's, I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. How far are you going? Are you going very far with this with your travels? Do you have um, any, any yeah. long trips? Nothing too crazy. Uh, okay. Well, I, Illinois, Texas, Texas is probably my farthest. Okay. Um, yeah. Texas. Where are you going to Texas? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> It's a big state. You can go a lot of places. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. I love Texas. Texas is. It's yeah. A, Last it's summer, I went to people in New Jersey and Toronto and North Carolina. So I, yeah. I get to go to Jersey next week. First time. So I'm excited yeah. about that. Um, so, all right. We're going to wrap up so that I don't keep you up all night. Um, but I want to say next week we've got the a, a very a good friend of mine and a phenomenal educator. Just a, just a super awesome person. Uh, Sarah Johnson leading us uh in our chat i'm not sure I, we don't have like a focus yet but it's probably going to be awesome this i think that's that's just what sarah does so super excited for that on may 30th in two weeks we got todd nesloni coming in nice. uh, he's gonna be talking about the power of stories uh we've got uh so some really good stuff lined up for mastery chat so 
always love Thursday nights. Great learning. Thank you, JC, for taking your time and like getting crazy with us in Master Chat and how fast it goes and some uh, great topic, great questions, a lot of awesome engagement. I'm going to get back in and get back to like some of the threads that got started, which is one of my favorite parts of the chats. But uh, we really appreciate you and and everything you do and and being this. So uh, thanks. Thank you, Jeff. I, it was such a pleasure, and I appreciate your team. You guys are always so supportive. So thanks for having me. Awesome, and everyone, we appreciate if you watched this for the entire time, or for a minute here or there, or, you've, or if you fast forwarded to the end. Thank you anyway. We appreciate you checking in and being involved in Master Chat every week. It's really awesome to see so many educators from all over the world coming together to try and learn and be better every single Thursday when you don't have to be because you just got done working or you're on your way to work. It's just, it's phenomenal. It makes us so happy and, uh, and honored to be a part of it. So we will see you all next week and good night. Good night.